In this last gallery, we find the synthesis of the whole exhibition. The Indio's initial response to evangelization was personal and intimate. Juana, the wife of Raja Humabon, reportedly cried when she saw the image of the Santo Nino. The Indio's response was influenced by doctrinal instructions, or if it was, its effect was minimal. The indigenous people's perception of godhood was founded on their ancestral or Anito system and its native pantheon of gods as protectors or dispensers of good and evil. In the dawn of the production of ecclesiastic art in the Philippines, the early carvers were unschooled. The early images were often clumsy, ugly even, yet they were compelling, visceral. Though crudely carved, this tableau of the Sagrada Familia is endowed with organic unity. Mary laying her hand on Jesus' head, just like a mother does to her child, wherein in fact, he is God. Joseph looks on, draws attention to the child. Their look-alike outfits unite mother and son, seems to be cut from the same cloth. The Christ child is supposed to be raising his hand in benediction, but here it looks like he is just waving. Our Lady of Solitude, she's supposed to be grieving, but her face is expressionless. She bears the traits of an Indian in the shape of her face and eyes. There is, however, a sense of softness in the ripple of her veil. Another image of the Virgin that displays the traits of a native. Both mother and child have non-Caucasian features, fleshy nose and thick lips. Her hand, though well-shaped, is mannish that of someone who did a lot of labor. Consider this interesting pair. Are they angels? It looks like the carver is asking the question, can angels look like Indios too? These pair of angels came from Pangasinan. They are indigenous, dressed like hunters, wearing briefs held up by woven rattan belts. On their shoulders are similar woven straps that held bamboo containers for blowguns or arrows. This crucifix is the smallest in the collection, yet one of the most interesting. It is made out of guava. Just like the angels, he is wearing something native. Instead of a crown of thorns, he wears a headband made out of woven rattan. Look at his face as well. It resembles a ritual mask. This crucifixion scene is an example of Filipino ingenuity. The Indio made a version of the Victorian glass dome that contains ivory images. Here, using recycled materials, an empty apothecary bottle, cotton, cardboard, and glitters, he assembled the images of the crucified Christ, the Virgin, and Saint John. Interesting detail to observe is the palayok on the Virgin's head. Recall the point that the indigenous people's perception of godhood was founded on their ancestral or anito system and its native pantheon of gods as protectors or dispensers of good and evil. When the Indios were evangelized, the patron saints took the place of their gods. In the changing landscape of their now colonized homeland, they found comfort in the intercessions of the new faith. For strange new illnesses that their own remedies could not heal, there was San Roque with a gaping wound on his leg to turn to. For the failing harvest, there was San Isidro to soothe their sufferings under the conquistadores. There was Christ on the cross or the Dolores' mother, with whose sorrow at her loss they could sympathize. This image of San Roque is characteristically Pangasinan. San Roque is the guardian against pestilence. He is normally portrayed with a dog and an angel. According to accounts of his life, when he was afflicted with the plague, he took shelter in the forest. A dog owned by a noble man visited him every day, bringing him bread and licking his wounds. Here the dog looks like what we call an ascal, a native dog. This image of San Roque is particularly interesting because he is wearing a conical hat like a salapot. It seems that the carver has put an element of the native costume to the image of the beloved patron saint. San Isidro is the patron of farmers. The carver of this relieve of San Isidro Labrador has understanding of perspective. Although the angel and the man plowing the field in the background are extremely small, 
Father Relieve tells the story of San Isidro, who often went to Mass, thus the church in the foreground. He was always late for the field, much to the dismay of his co-farmers and landlord. However, in order for him to continue his spiritual service, an angel was seen plowing his field. This relieve of San Isidro is more colorful and ornate. It has a Rococo frame and has a higher level of sophistication than the other. This image of the Virgen Dolorosa from 19th century Laguna resembles that of the popular image known as the Nuestra Señora de los Dolores de Torumba, venerated in Patil. Her face is framed by a rostrillo, an oval set of rays. This is an example of an image for home veneration that was copied from a church venerated image. Another interesting Virgen Dolorosa is this one, with a long fabric that could be a girdle or a handkerchief that zigzags on her on the font of her skirt, leading the viewer's attention to her face, again framed by a rostril. Dr. Esperanza Gatbonton theorizes that this may be a reflection of how India store clothing folded in a tamlipi. This compelling image of Christ called Eche Homo is a Molave piece from Pico. His arms are bound, he is half naked, yet his face shows great calm as if he is in deep meditation. Christ here is being presented to the populace who is calling for his death. In the context of evangelization and colonization, this restraint in the midst of suffering gives consolation to the Indios in the middle of their suffering in the hands of their colonizers. Scenes of the Passion of Christ are popular among the Indios. The suffering Christ is an image they can relate to. From the extremely naive and unschooled carvings, religious imagery passed into the hands of artisans harnessed into production for churches, ecclesiastics, and the more affluent homes. Hardwoods like Molave and Nara were reserved for church santos. The high relief carving depicts St. Augustine and a moment of enlightenment. His desk quill pen in hand with an angel holding the inkwell. Atop his desk are his crozier and mitre, while overhead a smiling virgin holds a book. The Holy Spirit hovers overhead. Doctors of the church like St. Augustine are often depicted with the Holy Spirit, giving instructions and enlightenment. This is a rare depiction of the Calvary scene showing God the Father, wearing a papal tiara set in recess from the earthy scene surrounded by swirling Chinese clouds and cherubs. At the forefront is the dead Christ on the cross. Below, Mary and John with faces lifted upward, contemplating Christ. At the foot of the cross is Adam's skull. Behind the head of the Father is a triangle, symbol of the triune God and above it, the Holy Spirit. San Jerónimo is one of the four Latin fathers of the church, a biblical scholar. He translated the New Testament known as the Latin Vulgate. He lived as a hermit at one time and was known to beat his chest with stone in atonement for his sins. He is one of the staunchest defenders of celibacy for priesthood. This is San Gregorio Magno. He was a brilliant administrator, establishing the form of Roman liturgy and its music, thus the term Gregorian chant. He instituted the rule celibacy for the priesthood. He is shown wearing his papal attire and the papal tiara. This image of San Mateo Apostol is meticulously carved from Molave. The folds of the garment fall precisely into place. He holds a book as one of the authors of the gospel and wears a shoulder bag to indicate that he was formerly a tax collector. This is an exquisite image of the resurrection of Christ. Its vestments have red hues, similar to the large relieve in the courtyard. Notice how the image balances on the right leg while the left leg gracefully bends backward. It looks like he is dancing. It is in the realm of folk images 
However, that the Filipino Santeros achieve originality, unleashing vibrant colors and florid designs and expressive imagery, as in this collection of urnas. Urnas are home altars that contains images of saints. They sometimes imitate the retablo of the local church. This is an elaborately constructed urna with broken pediment covered with sprigs of flowering plant and dentals on the upper portion. The segmented cornice has leaves in variegated colors. The stout columns are wrapped with flowering vines, while column heads are covered with fruits. The flanges are composed of scrolls that appear to germinate with drooping flowering plants. This urna resonates with motives and strong colors of southern Philippines. The pediment composed of three separate card segments is a mass of leaves and flowers, dominated by the red bud at the center. The pillars are festooned with flowers. Fruiting plants are incorporated in the foliated flanges. Note the two kneeling figures at the base. The composition of the urnas also evolved. Here, the main construct is mounted on a wooden gradilia or small steps and a new motive appears, formal floral arrangement in vases. The floral motives on the flanges are more delicate, like embroidery on fine material. A new religious motive, the triangle surrounded with golden rays, symbol of the Holy Trinity is introduced in the pediment. This urna with three-paneled Rococo crown pediment has a four-paneled door. The inner sides of the dorm frames have paintings of saints. The left side has an Augustinian saint, perhaps Santo Tomas de Villanueva and Saint Joseph. On the opposite side are the Blessed Virgin and an unidentified female saint. In theory, some urnas have doors in order that they can be closed after the evening prayer. It seems that Indios have the idea that the saints should be honored with time to rest at night as well. This is the finest urna in the collection, also considered its oldest. It is mountain on legs carved with stylized lion heads. The backdrop of the urna shows Adam and Eve hiding their nakedness. He, with the leaf from the tree, while she tugs at her long braided hair to cover herself. Above the Adam and Eve panel, a graphically delineated bird representing Holy Spirit hovers majestically, its wings fully spread. Philippine religious images are considered as a multi-layered expression of contextualized faith and negotiated history. The Indio response aims to highlight the resulting Filipino artistry and craftsmanship in the merging of the indigenous and the foreign, where religious art has witnessed to a continuing past.